The Optolong LXtreme. I'm going to go through the spec, the challenges, some example images, and comparing it to the Optolong L Enhance narrowband filter. Let's start with the spec. The Optolong L Extreme is a dual band narrowband filter with a 7 nanometer band pass for oxygen 3 and hydrogen alpha. The advantage of the L Extreme over the L Enhance is the lack of transmission lines between H beta and oxygen 3. Therefore, if you are in heavy light pollution areas, you're going to block more of that light pollution and isolate just the emission nebulae data. But that does also present some challenges, which I will talk more about shortly. And the benefit of a narrowband filter is that it isolates, as I've just mentioned, the transmission lines for emission nebulae, such as the Rosette Nebula, the Orion Nebula, etc. And therefore, even in darker skies, I live in Bortle 4 skies, there are still benefits of using a narrowband filter to isolate just the emission lines for the data that you want to capture. And the image quality that you get is much better by just isolating the wavelengths that you want, because you're blocking all of that extra light pollution from the wavelengths that you don't want to capture. This filter however is not a specific light pollution filter so if you are living in the middle of a city and you want to capture broadband targets like galaxies or star clusters then a narrowband filter isn't really what you're wanting to go for the Optolong LX Stream and L Enhance and other narrowband filters are specifically designed to isolate wavelengths of emission nebulae only. And finally, before we move on to the challenges, let's talk about the price. The one and a quarter inch is £169 and the two inch version is £239. I got those prices from First Light Optics. I think they're basically the same price wherever you look. I will leave some links in the description down below for the UK and the US and Canada, so be sure to check them out depending on where your local retailer is. Okay, let's move on to some of the challenges that you might face when using a narrowband filter like the Optolong L Extreme. Focusing is potentially a challenge for you depending on your light pollution and the equipment that you're using. Not such a problem if you're using an electronic focuser, but if, like me, you're using a Batonov mask or if you just rely on using the live view of a DSLR and zooming in and just trying to find the, the right focus there, then you might struggle a little bit more. Because you're isolating hydrogen alpha and oxygen three wavelengths, and they're only a seven nanometer band pass, so it's a really narrow band pass, then because you're blocking out so much extra light, you'll find that the stars in your images will be really quite faint. And therefore, when you're trying to focus using diffraction spikes or just with the live view of the camera screen on your DSLR, you might find that you're not actually capturing as much data as you would be even compared to the L Enhance. Now of course there are ways around this and one way around that is to use a bright star in the sky um, such as Sirius in the winter sky in the northern hemisphere. That's the brightest star in the sky so if you can slew your equipment to Sirius then you stand a much better chance of being able to focus. However, if you're in heavily light polluted skies in the middle of a city, then even that might still be a challenge for a narrowband filter. And what you might have to do at that point is just take some long exposures, and I'm talking potentially 30 seconds plus, to be able to get the stars bright enough for you to be able to focus. That of course means that focus can take a little bit longer because rather than just using the live view on the back of a DSLR or just looping some short three to five second exposures with a astronomy camera, then you're now having to take longer exposures and, and you're making small adjustments between each of those exposures and you kind of just have to hope that when your new image comes in that the diffraction spikes are where they need to be. So focusing can potentially not only be a challenge, but also take a lot longer with the Optolong L Extreme. Now, I don't have that particular issue in my Bortle 4 skies, but if you're in the middle of a city, then it is something to bear in mind. And if you're using a DSLR on the live view, you probably won't see diffraction spikes at all. One thing that you can do with a DSLR to get around that is just increase your ISO to something ridiculous like, I don't know, 6400. And just to make the image as bright as it can possibly be but don't forget to change your settings back to something more like 800 when you're doing your deep sky imaging another challenge that you might face with the optolong l extreme is star halos 
I have experienced issues with star halos in my images. Now they can be edited out in post-processing, but it's just an extra challenge that you'll have to face when editing your images. And having done my own research online, there doesn't really seem to be a definitive answer as to why this happens. One thing that has been talked about online is that potentially with faster rigs on my own scope, I'm imaging at f4.9, that it is a potential for star halos due to the faster f-stop but that being said i've also seen complaints from people who are imaging at f7 that are also experiencing halos as well for my rig you can see behind me the skywatcher 72 ed and the zw 533 i do get star halos it seems to only really be on the brighter stars of an image and some targets it seems to have been worse than others i don't know if that's just because of exposure time or just the particular settings that i happen to have used that night whether it's been a full moon or something like that i'm not entirely sure but some of my images have certainly been worse than others for star halos i think it's also worth noting that if you are a dslr imager then using a narrowband filter like the optolong l extreme you really need to make sure that your camera is modified and the reason that you'll want to have your camera modified is because a stock dslr will block out about 85 percent of red light that hits the sensor and therefore with a narrowband filter like the optolong l extreme what you're doing is you're isolating a seven nanometer band pass at the hydrogen alpha part of the spectrum the red part of the spectrum uh, and therefore you're isolating a wavelength that your camera is largely going to ignore. That's not to say that it won't make your images better with a stock DSLR, but if you just modify your camera, then you're gonna gain a lot more benefit from allowing all of that light to hit the sensor. So I definitely recommend having your camera modified for the Optolong L Extreme and also the L Enhance. And here's a few examples of images that I've taken with the Optolong L Extreme. This first image is of the North American Nebula. I've purposefully left the star halos in this version so that you can see what I'm talking about on the brighter stars you can see some of the halos there this is just one hour's worth of data with no astro dark taken over the summer last year and I was only using two minute subs and it's worth pointing out again because of the narrow band passes on this filter it's really recommended that you take longer exposures to allow more light to hit your sensor so two minute subs aren't particularly ideal but being in Bortle 4 skies I was able to get away with it and produce what I think is a pretty decent image for just one hour's worth of data. This next image is of the Rosette Nebula. This was taken in January of this year. It's only two hours worth of data but this time I used five minute subs and I could really see the difference between this image and the North American Nebula. This one was much easier to process in terms of pulling out that detail. It still obviously needs a lot more integration time, but you can see just two hours of data with a one-shot color camera and the L Extreme, you can produce a really good image. And this last image is probably the one that I'm most proud of from this particular collection. This is the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. I took this just a few weeks ago in my backyard. It was the first image that I took in my new garden after we moved house and this was just over three hours worth of data and i used 10 minute subs because it was new moon and i just wanted to see how far i could push the setup that i've got in my new house and i think you can agree that this is a pretty reasonable image for just three hours worth of data now should you buy the optolong l extreme over the optolong l enhance i think if you already own the Optolong L Enhance, I'm not really sure why you would necessarily upgrade to the L Extreme unless you just really wanted it. But I don't really see a scenario where you would particularly need both filters. I think you're probably looking at one or the other. If you're trying to decide between the two, then bear in mind that the L Extreme is more expensive. For the one and a quarter inch, it's only about £40 more expensive, so it's not a huge amount more expensive. But when you move into the two inch version, it does cost quite a bit more and therefore it's worth bearing that in mind I personally don't think that the benefit you gain from the L Extreme compared to the L Enhance is particularly worth that extra money that being said if you are trying to decide between the two then why not go for the Optolong L Extreme particularly if you're living in 
heavy light pollution area in the middle of a city, you will gain extra benefit by using the L Extreme because you'll just be blocking out that little bit of extra light pollution in the H Beta range, and therefore your image quality will be better as a result. Now, I've had the L Extreme since the summer of last year when I also bought the 533, and I've been using the L Enhance for about two years. I think if I was going to buy them from scratch, I'd probably go for the L Enhance, mostly because the Star Halos have put me off the L Extreme a little bit. That being said, I have seen of people complaining of Halos from the L Enhance as well, but I have to say from my own personal experience with my DSLR and my 72ED, I have never actually experienced Star Halos, but that's not to say that other people won't. But I think with the extra cost on top, and the lack of star halos, I would have to say that I would prefer the L Enhance if I was going to buy one or the other. Let me know in the comments down below which filter you would buy and why, or which one you've bought and why. And I will leave a link just here to a video that I created for the Optolong L Enhance. And if you want me to do a complete comparison comparing the L Enhance to the L Extreme, then I'm happy to do that. Leave a comment down below if that's something that is of interest to you. Otherwise, I'll see you over in the L Enhance video.